All right, and welcome back or welcome to chapter two's learning objective one, identify the sections of a classified statement of financial position. You'll see here that chapter two is actually a further look at financial statements where chapter one was a look at financial statements. All right, as I mentioned in the intro video to this chapter, there is one learning objective. Depending on how long this video gets, I might chop it into two videos. We will see, because we are gonna start off with the assets and then look at liabilities and end with shareholders equity, which is just a little, little bit. So I might chop these right in half. Okay, so this is a balance sheet or otherwise known as a statement of financial position. As uh, one of our students mentioned on the discussion board, um, accounting. We in accounting, I say we as in the profession, uh, like to have multiple names for the same thing. I, on behalf of the profession, am sorry. Um, I, you know, in the accounting major classes, I make a joke. Uh, the reason why it's so complicated is so that we have job security. Uh, but really, listen, um, my job as a teacher, as a professor, is to, you know, make it simple and repeat the important things because learning is repeated exposure to same or similar materials. Okay, so because of that, we're going to start the same way we're going to end, which is looking at this balance sheet where all of our asset balances are gonna equal our liabilities plus shareholders equity. And the way that we present them, um, that is our assets and our liabilities and our shareholders equity, is going to have some rules. And within those rules, there's gonna be some flexibility and some exceptions, and I'll tell you about that. But I can tell you that like presentation matters. And we're gonna do a bunch of chapters on the substance, but this is what is referred to as the form. And so why I say it matters is because could you imagine you are a marketing major, you are a marketer and you know, your manager, your, I don't know, uh, chief of operations comes to you and is like, hey, can I get you to, you know, set me up a forecast, uh, show me and then show me what the end of the year numbers would look like if under a couple different scenarios, one is if I give you million dollars for that marketing campaign you want to do and um, you know you have a 30% ROI, one where you have a 300% ROI, return on your investment, return on your marketing budget, and one where you just like hit a grand slam and get like a thousand, um, you know, return on your marketing investment. You know, what's that gonna look like for our cash flows? What's that gonna look like for our income statement? What's that gonna look like on our balance sheet? And if at the end, um, and you know what, maybe they would have you work together with an accounting person, or maybe they're just like, hey, you have a Bachelor of Commerce, you can create financials. And if you don't present it uh, in a way in which it at least like, you know, like gets a passing grade, like it's like a solid 60, or, you know, maybe it's, it gets refined by your manager when they come back and, and it's, you know, just a little bit. Anyways, it matters because it communi communication matters. So we're gonna go through all of this and um, by the end of it, with some practice, uh, you will be able to create your very own uh, balance sheet, which will be passing, uh, if not excelling, grade. Okay, so the first rule is current assets. So remember, assets equal liabilities plus equity. We're starting off, let's just go back here. We're gonna start here on the assets and work our way down. Okay. So current assets, these are assets effectively that you are going to turn into cash in some, some way, shape or form or use within the next year. So current assets, it's current. And I say year, there's a little asterisk there within the current operating cycle. So sometimes uh, companies will have a 13, month calendar, sometimes they'll have 11 months. People, I, I'm just gonna like default to a year, but understand that the financial statements might be shown in a different operating cycle, just according to the operating business, but usually it's cyclically, usually it's one year. Okay, so the current assets are things that we are expect to be sold or used within one year, hence they are current. Current is one year. All right, um, and then within those current assets, we list them in order of liquidity from most liquid to least liquid. So most at the top and least at the bottom. 
And so that means cash is listed first because it's most likely to become cash because it is cash, already cash. All right. And then we typically go with um, any trade investments. All right, so right now I'm here. Uh, trade investments, which trading investments. So that would be like if a company had stocks in another company and they're publicly traded, we could easily just click a couple buttons and go boop, boop, and turn those into cash. Then we have accounts receivable. Accounts receivable are gonna be items that people, we made a sale, people owe us money. We're gonna hope that they pay us within 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, anything beyond that, and we're like, oh goodness. And then we gotta talk, but we'll have a whole chapter on accounts receivable. Uh, people, we will have a whole chapter on basically everything here. Uh, so we're doing a high overview. Again, repeated exposure, same or similar materials. We're gonna go broad and then we're gonna go deep. So um, inventory, at a high level, inventory are things that you put, um, that you have that are gonna be available for sale. So if you go into your local corner store and you see SpaghettiOs and you see Slurpees, those are the store's inventories. They're there and they are waiting for you to purchase them. Uh, just hopefully not together uh, for the same meal. All right, prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses are things that you pay, you prepay, and you use at a different time. Okay, so an example of this would typically be insurance. Uh, businesses, people uh, oftentimes pay insurance a year in advance. So. Um, because you pay for it a year in advance, we're gonna talk in a soon chapter about matching, <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about matching our, I just wanna make sure I don't get too in depth here, matching our, how we use something with um, the income statement. So as we earn something or as we use it, that would be where it is reflected. So until we actually use it, so when we prepay for a year's worth of expenses, until we actually use it, um, that insurance for that month, uh, we're gonna put it on our balance sheet because it meets the definition of an asset. An asset is something that is a result of a past transaction that's gonna have a future economic benefit that the company controls. And so, you know, prepaid insurance, prepaid parking. I used to buy a parking pass um, on campus and pay for a whole year and each month I get to use one twelfth of it. All right, but I'm gonna be using it over the year. So that's why it's last because it is the least likely to be used in this next operating cycle. In very limited circumstances, sometimes you might be asked to present current assets in reverse order of liquidity. Basically, if it was um, made sense to your user to do so, but I've honestly never worked at a company where we've done this, so just know it's possible, um, but know that the default is in the order of liquidity, starting with cash, because it's most like cash, because it's cash, all the way down to stuff that we will use by the end of the year. All right. Then, so we had current assets, which are assets that are most likely to be used or turned into cash within a year. And non-current assets are assets that will exceed a year. So assets that are not expected to be converted to cash uh, or used within a year. All right, so I always like that in accounting. When we get to know one and then we know the other, the non-current is just the opposite. So these are things like long-term investments. Uh, we might be investing into another company um, and expect to keep that investment for a couple of years. Property, if we own property like land, if we have a manufacturing plant, if we have equipment, we're gonna hope that all of these things last well beyond a year. We're talking 10, 20, 30, um, maybe equipment's five or 10. Intangible assets, again, we'll have another chapter on this, so don't get too, too hung up. Intangible assets are things like, okay, you see this? I'm just gonna knock, my dogs are gonna hear this, but that is a table. I knocked a table. That is a tangible table, that is a tangible asset. An intangible asset is something that you can't really see or feel. Uh, it might be something like a patent, okay? And of course, a patent might have a piece of paper, but what the patent represents is your ownership over this thing um, like intellectual property or a customer list. Okay, yeah, you can see a customer list, but the value is the, the names and everything that's compiled there. Oh, um, 
be careful, just like an aside, whenever anybody asks you for your information, because oftentimes uh, they can be putting you on a list, an email list, and selling that email list to people, and then you'll be bombarded. Uh, student information, like you are all such a great resource because you're awesome. Um, and also there's so many of you that marketers would love to kind of have the opportunity to sell you something. And if it's something that you want, maybe it's a win-win. Um, but if it's not, then perhaps it's not. Anyways, just as an aside, anytime that you put your name on a list, um, it's possible that it could be sold. Okay, and that would be called an intangible asset. Goodwill is flipping confusing. Um, so I will just put it like this. Uh, it is when a company pays more for a company than it's fair value of assets. And so the amount paid over and above those assets are is called goodwill. And goodwill, if you come take uh, advanced accounting two with me, 4102, uh, we will talk a lot about goodwill there. All right, so other assets. If, <laughs> I love this, uh, if it didn't, if I didn't discuss the asset, it's considered an other asset. You might actually see an other asset line in the balance sheet. Uh, it's basically just something they, they're like, okay, it's not worth defining. You know, like, for example, you might put your table in equipment um, or depending if it doesn't quite, you probably put your table in equipment. Um, but something like another asset would just be, <laughs> it might be like in a retired piece of equipment that's not actively being used in the business and you're holding it for sale, held for sale assets. Um, if it's not like material, you might just throw all the other things into this one bucket and call it other assets and then explain it in the notes. All right, long-term investments. Okay, so digging in a little bit. Long-term asset investments, so long-term, meaning more than one year, um, these can either be debt or equity. And so we know if we are investing in equity securities, whoops, that linking back to chapter one, that means that that is probably into a corporation. So we're having shares into other in, yeah, incorporated entities or other companies. Uh, and if it's debt, it might be in a sole proprietor, it might be in a corporation, it might be in a partnership, and it might be in the form of loans, um, which is like, hey, we gave them cash and they bought something. It might be a mortgage, which means it's interest and principal. Um, it might be a bond, which has its own, um, its own, payment um, systems and notes. Again, it's own payment system. I just kind of gave a bit more of an explanation on mortgages because many of us have heard those terms before. Uh, so I wanna keep this video informative, but also not overwhelming because the purpose of this is kind of getting that overview. What is a long-term investment? Same or similar materials. When you see this again in the future, you'll be like, oh, I know that. Okay, so these Long-term investments are not normally intended to be sold and converted to cash within one year, and therefore they are long-term. Now, you might ask me, Sam, how do I know that they're not intended to be sold or converted to cash within a year? Well, as accountants um, and as observers of the financial statements, we ask management because management's representations are in the financial statements. So we are able to trust managers for like, hey, what are we doing with this mortgage that we've invested, um, that we've lent this like one company? And they're like, oh, we're gonna keep that because they're paying us at like 12% and that's a good investment. Cool, all right, it's gonna be a long-term investment. And if it's not gonna be intended to be kept in a year, then we put into the current uh, asset section. Okay, property plant equipment. Now, this is important because within our long-term assets, we, if you think back, in current assets, we are ordering them in the order of liquidity. So cash goes first, because cash is cash. And then we're looking at investments, and then we're looking at accounts receivable, because we're trying to think how quickly can we use or convert this to cash. In long-term assets, we are looking at the order of permanency. Okay, so when we're looking at our property, plants, and equipment, order of permanency. Hmm, if we think about land and a building, 
which one is going to be used up first? Well, land is land. People will say land is the best investment because they're not making any more of it. And until we're able to colonize Mars or another planet, then that's probably gonna be very true. Uh, so land, you can clear whatever's on the land. You can build a building, you can tear it down. A building can stay there for 200 years and tear it down. But land is more permanent than buildings. Buildings are likely more permanent than equipment. Equipment is like your tractors more permanent than your chair and your chair is going to last you longer than your laptop and your laptop, interesting, is going to last you longer than your vehicles. Maybe this is debatable. Um, I debatable depends. So again, general rules and then, um, and then know how to work within those rules. Listen, um, I should also say if uh, you are ever writing one of my exams, which I hope you stick around and you write your final exam in December, if um, you ever need and you're like, no, I don't agree, or you have a reason why something should go in a different order, state your assumption and be consistent and we will give you full marks. Okay, so that's the advantage of a paper exam. Lots of room for effort marks. Okay, and professional judgment, because you're building your professional judgment. All right, depreciation. Remember how I said with prepaid expenses, you spend a bunch of money up front and then use it up over the year? That term is actually called amortizing it over the year. And so similar to prepaid expenses, in our property, plant, and equipment, specifically let's talk about our tractor equipment, we're gonna spend a bunch of money, say 20,000 or even $100,000. It's a fancy tractor. Um, we're gonna spend $100,000 and then we're gonna use that over the next 20 years. So we're gonna depreciate that use over 20 years. That's called depreciation. So we're gonna see a chapter of this, but in theory, one of the ways we can depreciate Take 100,000, divide it by 20 years, we're gonna depreciate 1 20th or $5,000 over the next 20 years. So at the end of 10 years, the tractor is gonna be on our books for 50,000. So there's a couple different ways where we're gonna systematically assign the portion, um, but if effectively we're moving it from the balance sheet um, year by year by year, and we're gonna be expensing it. So at the end of the 20 years, that tractor is no longer an asset on our books because we've used it all up. And because we're using it up over a period of greater than one year, it's gonna be a long-term asset. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. Accumulated depreciation. So what we end up doing on our books is we end up having our tractor, let's just do this make this go away and then I'll put it back. Okay. And um, when we put it on our books, we're going to go debit tractor, pp and &E. And we're going to credit cash. So I said it was $100,000. Cool. And yes, we're bringing out the journal entries. That's how we build our financial statements. We turn stories of transactions into debits and credits, and that creates our financial statements. All right. And so debit credit to reflect purchase a uh, tractor. Cool. All right. So then I said we are going to um, use up 1 20th of the tractor every year. Well, in order to do that, we need to expense it. So we're going to debit um, depreciation expense. And this is going to be 5k. Cool. And then credit goes to ba -ba -da -ba. Accumulated depreciation. All right, accumulated depreciation. 5K. Okay, so then on your balance sheet, this goes on your balance sheet, and this goes on your balance sheet. Because balance sheets are cumulative statements, and because this is a positive, and this is in the opposite direction, it's a negative, it's credit, um, then the net, what's going to reflect in your balance sheet, is going to be we're going to be left with a tractor of 95k in our balance, tractor pp &E. Now you can either have it net, which is what this is right now, or you can do gross. So you can do tractor, did I spell that wrong? Tracker, tractor, tractor, or Goodness. 
bad Albertan. Um, and accumulated, accumulated depreciation tractor. And this would be 5K. And so we're going to, however it's presented, maybe it's even like this. Um, or however we line it up. But effectively, this means the same thing. It's either um, shows gross, our total tractor, and a total depreciation expense, or net, where it would just hide this part. Net would be 95K. Either way, the net book value or the net is worth 95K. And at the end of next year, it would be 90K. And at the end of the third year, it would be 80, sorry, at the end of the first year, it would be 95. At the end of next year, it would be 90. And at the end of the, the third year, it would be 85. All right, so enough with the debits and credits. Um, last year, oh no. Okay, we're gonna pause this. We're gonna return the normal slide. One sec. All right, power of internet. Um, yeah, last year my studies uh, said, sorry, studies, students, my studies said uh, that it freaked them out that the first year, or sorry, first week of classes, I talked about debits and credits and I did debits and credits. So you're welcome. Uh, this year I waited until Monday morning of your second week. All right, it's okay. Bit by bit, people. Uh, learning repeated exposure, same or similar materials, lots of practice, lots of exposure. All right, moving on. And we're gonna talk about intangible assets. Remember, these are the things that if I, like if you can knock it, it's a tangible asset. And if you can't knock it, it's an intangible one. So no physical substance in these intangible op, uh, assets. It represents a right or privilege, people. Our definition of the asset, result of a past transaction, has future economic benefits, and the company controls. An example of this would be, um, I, in Calgary, I had a series of dentists. And they seem to always retire by 45. And they would sell their practice. So they would typically be renting or um, own their, you know, their building or, you know, have the lease. They would sell that to the new dentist. They would, like a person emerging wanting to buy their practice, they would sell the chairs, all the tangible assets. And then the customer list. Because they knew that, uh, and one day I would just show up and I would have a new dentist. And they'd be like, oh yes, like maybe a new sign is outdoor on the door. Um, and they're like, oh yes, Dr. Danny, old dentist, he has now been replaced and it's now, um, you know, Dr. Smith. Not their real name, but you get the thing. And so the big value wasn't necessarily, you know, the dentist in the strip mall and the parking spots and the chairs. The big value was they had a customer base. Like we rolled in there, we probably spent $250 or our insurance did for me for one hour. And if you look around and there's 20 people like that, you start doing the math and you're like, oh, hot damn. This customer list um, that also has customers having a habit of showing up to a certain place, this is worth a lot of money. So examples, patents, copyrights, trademarks, licenses, customer lists. Um, we talked about Goodwill before. We will see you again in 4102. The common theme is that they all generate value to a company. If they don't generate future economic value, future value to a company, they are not an asset, they are not an intangible asset. Um, we amortize, let's see, we amortize intangible assets. Sorry, I have a kneeless chair um, in my, my, long, my, or not kneeless, pardon me, like a backless, and the knee thing is just like squeaking like nobody's business. Okay. Um, if they have an indefinite life, so meaning if they like last forever, then they're like land and we don't amortize them. If they have an in, if they have a, de a definite life, gosh, don't you just love these double negatives? Um, so if they have a definite life, like a tractor, so a definite, if they have a defined life like a tractor, we amortize them. So we write them off little bit by little bit like a tractor. And if they have an indefinite life, like land, then we don't amortize. We, you know, debit our patent, credit our cash, like however we pay for it, and we just leave it there. And we don't depreciate or amortize each year. Amortize is just the term that we use if it's an intangible asset. All right, so time for some practice. Um, I would love for you to prepare the asset section. 
So you have um, a list of financial statement items, don't worry, you don't have to make any debits or credits, but you have all the ending balances similar to last week's um, items, except now when you create just the asset section, I need you to put them in um, an appropriate order. So I need you to put these in an appropriate order. Uh, consider taking a screenshot or pausing this video now. And when we return, we will complete this section together. Thank you and we'll talk soon. All right, so hopefully by now you've attempted this. A uh, friendly reminder, no marks for pretty. Uh, your notes need to be um, impactful, they need to be meaningful to you, but there's never any marks for pretty here or on an exam. So we're just gonna smash this out. I'm gonna write, you know, that this is for my asset section. And then I'm gonna remind myself that I have both current assets and I have long-term assets. Okay, long learn, oh goodness, long-term assets, cool. All right, uh, hopefully this is showing up well for you. If not, um, this will be posted in your supplemental materials. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be linked below in the description. Okay, so current, what is the most, okay, and I'm gonna give myself a hint. Current is going to be in, what is this? Order of liquidity, which means most like cash or most likely to be used. Okay, and so, cash, awesome. I'm gonna put in my cash. And I know I said no marks for pretty, but I just I can't help myself just a little bit. Move that over, cool. All right, cash. And we are gonna have, how much we're gonna have for this cash? We are gonna have 16,400. Again, no marks for pretty. All right, it's bothering me. Okay, now we're gonna go through and I'm gonna kind of skim. I'm skimming, Aha! accounts receivable. I'm lazy, I go AR, you can too if you'd like. 14,500, awesome. Now I'm gonna look at inventory, oh, and supplies, inventory supplies, inventory supplies, inventory, things I want to sell. If I'm a convenience store, it is my SpaghettiOs and it is my Slurpees, or supplies. If I'm a convenience store, that's like my Lysol that I have on hand to clean the floors. All right, well, my business is selling stuff. So my inventory, I want to go before my supplies. My supplies are used to keep my place nice and clean. My inventory makes me money. So I want my inventory to go first. And this um, this messed up some people on an exam we had one time. So if you are making any notes to yourself, inventory goes before supplies because you wanna make money before you make things clean. Um, <laughs> it's probably how I remember it. All right, now I'm gonna skim, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Okay, I think I've gotten all of my, no! What is that? Oh, yeah, you're right. I need to get my prepaid insurance. Thank you. Okay, prepaid insurance, right. I bought this thing and it's gonna last me for the next 12 months. So whatever I have left is my balance here. That's my $3,900. Cool. All right, I'm gonna add all this up my fancy little formula here on my auto calculator. Cool, $48,000. Long-term assets. Okay, I don't, will I have enough room? Maybe make this a little smaller. Maybe make this one a little smaller, just a little bit. Okay, so now, what was my order here? <laughs> ah, yes, permanency. Permin... <laughs> Perm, we're gonna go perm, permanency. And here we go. So the most permanent thing is gonna be our land. Land because, you know, whatever we put on it, we can just wreck it down and land is gonna be there. It's the most permanent thing um, and we can talk about it. Uh, they're not making any more of it until we colonize the moon. Or no, Mars, Mars, one of those two. Cool, so we got land. How much is our land? Our land is 65,000 dollars interesting okay and now we are going to have our buildings because we put the buildings on the land and so which amount do we want to put on the buildings of a hundred and ten thousand 
or the accumulated depreciation for the buildings of 33. Yep, you got it. So we, we're gonna incorporate both and we're gonna show them gross. So we're gonna show um, buildings. We're gonna show our balance of buildings of 110,000, not 100,000, Samantha, 110. And we are gonna show our accumulated depreciation for buildings. And we're gonna show it right underneath. So we're gonna just do, do, do and I'm gonna show it as a negative. Um, and you'll see on the next slide, you can also just say less and then have it not a negative, but I'm a visual person. I wanna see it like this. Okay, so got that amount there. And then I'm gonna put a little sub, I don't know, subtotal. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put this here. All right, so my, how much is the book value? of my buildings, my the book value is $77,000. How much did I pay for my buildings? 110. How much have I used? 33,000. Okay, cool, that's what that means. Moving along. Oh, so what would it mean if this was like that? Basically, we still have a building, it's likely sitting on our land, and it is worthless, or mm, it has been used up. It's still on our books because it is still in operations. But effectively, um, it is its use has been, you know, used as far as accounting terms go. However, however, um, does that mean that it's useless or worthless? Not necessarily. Worth is what somebody would pay for it. So a third party person. So like not my mom or dad, um, or your mom or dad, but like or your friend. But it's like, what would a third per third party, arm's length person come and pay for it? So this is just the accounting. From accounting standards, it's not worth anything. Our net book value is zero. But in real life, maybe it's worth more. All right, so going back to this. Now we have our equipment. And our equipment is gonna be the same thing. Um, we're putting it below buildings because equipment is less permanent um, than our buildings, um, but they are still a long-term asset. And we have, how much do we have for our thing here? We have 70,000 for our building. Gosh, I'm sorry, for our equipment. And we have same thing, accumulated depreciation for our equipment. And how much do we have? 25,000, all right, minus 25,000. We're gonna do another subtotal. We spent $70,000 on our equipment. Uh, 25,000 has been used up, and we have a net book value of our equipment of $95,000. I don't know why it says negative, let's see. Sorry, um, 70,000 minus 25,000 equals net book value of 45,000. All right, so now if we wanna see what our uh, total of our long-term assets are gonna be, it would be long-term assets, long-term, long-term assets. We can do the same thing, so I should have maybe put it up here. Uh, total current assets. I would probably just move it back a little, boom, like that. Total long term assets and I would put a little subtotal here in here and I would add up what would I add up all of these fabulous and I have long term assets of 187 am I done no I want to know what my total assets are that was the name of the game total assets are going to be my total current assets plus my total long-term assets. They're gonna be 235,000. Um, when we're done a section, we put a subtotal and a double underline. So when we're done a section, pardon me, when we're done like an assets or the assets plus the, pardon me, when we do part of our accounting equation, uh, we put double underlines, whether it's total assets or 
That's right. We also do it under our liabilities plus our equity. All right. So wonderful job. Uh, see how you did and make sure to practice, right? Uh, so learning is repeated exposure to same or similar materials. Uh, wonderful job sticking around. I'm going to pause or pardon me, stop this video here because it did get a little longer and we're going to resume in the next one and we're going to look at liabilities and equities. Talk to you soon.